So I have the M1 MacBook Air that retails for £1,000 and I also have the iPad Pro that also retails for £1,000. But which machine is actually better at photo and video editing? Well, that's a bit complicated. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Carmoon, I uncover Apple tech as well as Apple related tech. So hit that subscribe button and like button if that's what you're into. But today I have these two M1 machines and on paper with the same chip, they might be very similar. However, they couldn't be more different. So the model that I have here is the M1 MacBook Air and this is the base model. Now currently, because it's been out for a little bit longer than this machine, you can actually pick one up here in the UK for about 900 pounds or even in the States for around $900. And even on the used market, you can pick these up for even cheaper. So this one here has the M1 eight core CPU and seven core GPU with uh, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage and this one over here is the 12.9 inch m1 ipad pro with uh, 128 gigabytes of ssd storage and 8 gigabytes of unified memory and this retails for 1000 pounds however to keep this sort of similar well in order for this to act like a laptop you obviously need to buy the magic keyboard which will set you back at 330 pounds so this machine will cost you 1330 30, whereas this one at the moment will retail for around 900 pounds if you look on Amazon and stuff like that. Again, links to both of these machines will be down in the description. So today I am going to do photo and video editing tests just to kind of stress the system and see if the price difference is actually worth it or not. So the first test I have here is Affinity Designer. So this is what I mainly use to edit my thumbnails. Now on the M1 iPad Pro, I'm using the iPad version however even though the m1 macbook air has the same chip i can't run the ipad version so obviously i use the full mac os uh, version of affinity designer now both of these projects are identical they're literally just imported into affinity designer but what i'm going to do is is to stress the system and to show actually the weaknesses of uh, the M1 iPad Pro, because that's actually what I realized is that when you start to do intensive stuff, this starts to fall apart a little bit. And that is in part because of iPad OS and its poor file management system. But again, I'll get into that and show you what I'm talking about. So the test that I'm gonna do is exporting a PNG file. Now, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna really stress the system. So I'm gonna set this to 20,000 pixels, by 11,250 pixels. So set that the same, press OK. Now, the weird thing with Affinity uh, Designer on the iPad, you have to wait for it to generate an export before you can proceed any further. Whereas on the M1 MacBook Air, and Mac OS in general, I can just export, save and job done. Okay, so finally that's generated the export. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna press okay, press export over here. And then in three, two, one, save, start. Now the weird thing is, is with Affinity Designer on the iPad, there is no status bar. So I have to go into the files application to see when it actually uh, has exported. And then this one obviously gives me the uh, export uh, bar. Now that's already done. So that took 13 seconds. So on the on paper, uh, on, at the first glance, it looks like the M1 iPad is just absolutely smashing the M1 MacBook Air. However, we haven't taken into, into account the generating the export before it's done that. So we don't know what kind of pre-rendering it's already done while we've waited. So I'm gonna do a second test to really make it actually fair because you know, doing the export like this isn't exactly realistic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the export at the same time and see which one is quicker in terms of its overall experience. And done. So. It looks like the M1 uh, MacBook Air took an extra one minute and 38 seconds. So in total, nearly sort of two minutes to export this. So now let's do the same test. But what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna actually export it at the same time. So I'm gonna start with this one 
and I'm going to do the export, set the uh, resolution and everything like that, then press export, then wait for it, and then save the file. And then I'm going to do the same on this one, and we'll see the overall time for me to press export and go through that process uh, on both machines and see actually which one is quicker in the real world. Okay, three, two, one, start and export. Okay, and then. 20,000, press OK. Now it's generating the report, or the export, I should say. And press OK, press Save. So to get to that point, it took two minutes and four seconds, or three seconds, and stop. OK, so that took two minutes and 18 seconds to do that from start to finish. Now let's do the same. So two minutes and 18 seconds. Now let's do the same with the M1 Mac. And stop. Okay, so two minutes and four seconds. So actually the M1 MacBook Air did that whole process actually a little bit quicker. And that was with me stumbling a little bit actually trying to do the uh, export. So in this specific test, obviously this is an extreme example. And again, it could be to do with the programs and stuff like that. Like I said, it's not a scientific test, but it is just to stress both systems. So one interesting factor is that now that I've exported these almost one gig image files, which potentially if you are a professional, you might have these huge composite files and stuff like that. I'm gonna see how long it takes to open. So first of all, I'm gonna do the M1 MacBook Air and then I'm gonna do the iPad because the iPad is interesting and I'll show you in a second. So three, two, one and done. Okay, so that took 18 seconds to do that. And as you can see, oh, it's stuttering a little bit. Give it a second. And there you go. So now, once it's sort of loaded in, yeah, absolutely fine. I can actually see the image, okay, which is a good thing. And I'll tell you why in a second. So that did it absolutely fine. Now let's try it on the iPad. So I'm going to reset the timer. I'm going to go back to here. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to tap on this and press start. And you'll see the issue I come uh, or run into. So it's been a minute now, and all that we see is just obviously the name of the project, and now it's popped up with this. And yeah, basically it just does that for a long time. And I think, to be honest, opening an image and waiting a minute and a half for it to open up, I think is long enough. So I'm just gonna press done because yeah, that's just not opening up on the M1 iPad. So if you are someone who does these big photo editing projects, you would actually be better off with an M1 MacBook Air. So now let's move on to video editing. So I've actually got LumaFusion running on both machines because obviously with the M1 MacBook, you can run iPad apps on Mac OS, which is really good. Now it's obviously not gonna be as optimized as it is on iPad OS. And obviously in this test, I'm running a seven core GPU over an eight core GPU, but I just wanna see the difference. So this project over here, is a 10 minute and 42 second project. And it's got uh, the, it's exactly the same on both. So I created both projects in exactly the same way. And I've also added the um, LUT on both. So both are ex exactly the same, as I said. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna battle these two against each other. So I've got the exact same settings on both. So we've got 4K, uh, at 50 megabits per second, 48 kilohertz for the audio quality, H.264 video coding, and the file format is QuickTime. So both are identical. And let's see which one is the winner. So three, two, one, and start. And done. So that took four minutes and 53 seconds. And done. So that took an extra 29 seconds on top of the M1 iPad Pro. So that was with H.264. Now let's try with H.265 because obviously that is a new file format that a lot of people are exporting in. So again, we've got the same settings as before and uh, the only difference is, is that we are now using, uh, let me set that to HEVC, so H.264. Uh, 
5 now instead of H.264. Everything else is the same. I'll just double check. Yeah, yeah. And let's hit export. Okay, so nearly done. And they're both neck and neck. Oh, I mean, they're basically identical uh, in terms of the H.265 export. So that's actually really surprising. So it's definitely showing that the encoders are definitely doing a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to H.265 export. So if you are gonna be doing any video editing, I would probably just recommend you export in H.265 because it's basically the same time. It took about 10 seconds uh, extra than H.264, um, especially on the M1 MacBook Air if you are gonna be using LumaFusion on it because it's only like 25 bucks or something like that, or 30 bucks at max compared to let's say Final Cut Pro, which will set you back 300 or 150 pounds if you are a student. Um, but yeah, that's actually really surprising and both are exactly the same in terms of the files. So yeah, that kind of shows that even though this one has the weaker CPU, well, GPU, um, yeah, it's basically the same. And my final test will be using Final Cut Pro on the M1 MacBook Air, because right now, even though there might be rumors that Final Cut Pro is coming to the M1 uh, iPad Pro, right now, Mac OS is the only operating system that works with Final Cut Pro. And a lot of professionals and even ab ab amateurs love Final Cut Pro. I use Final Cut Pro to edit all of my videos. And I have to be honest, it is just so much more more powerful as a tool than LumaFusion. This is just very limiting. So I want to export the same uh, export as I did in LumaFusion in Final Cut Pro just to see if there's any difference in terms of times. So right here I am exporting in compressor just because then I can control the settings output. So if you can see here I'm going to be exporting in 4k at 24 frames per second obviously with the same uh, bit rate as on the M1 iPad Pro in LumaFusion. The audio settings will be the same. Now, I couldn't figure out whether this was exporting in 10 bit. So what I've done is, is I've just set it as 10 bit. And then in terms of encoding, I've just set it as faster because I'm guessing that's what this will be on. But again, it's quite hard to really play around with the settings in this because you can't control it in LumaFusion. You can in Compressor. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to drag that over here. And then I'm going to start batch and three, two, one. And done. Okay, so that took five minutes and 17 seconds. So about 10 seconds slower in Final Cut Pro. Again, that might have been down to the settings that I may have used, but it's identical uh, between the two machines. And obviously this is a much more powerful uh, software on the M1 MacBook Air. Now, I get it. This isn't a scientific test because firstly, they're operating on different operating systems. It's not the exact same spec for spec. However, if you did spec this out to be very similar to the M1 iPad Pro, you can get this one with the 512 gigabyte of SSD storage, eight gigabytes of unified memory, and the eight uh, core GPU model for uh, retailing at £1,249. However, on Amazon, they're going for around £100 to £150 less than that. So between £1,100 to £1,150. And then if we wanted to spec the M1 iPad Pro to have the same as the eight core GPU, uh, 512 gigabyte model version of the M1 MacBook Air, um, you would have to spend around an extra £400 on top of the already quite dear £1,000. Then add, uh, adding on the Magic Keyboard, well, now you're talking of a price of between £1,700 to £1,800 for an iPad. So what does this all mean? Well, basically, in my opinion, with just this obviously limited testing, uh, the best bang for buck is the M1 MacBook Air. Even if you went for the eight core GPU version of this, you're getting much more memory. Uh, you're getting obviously the full macOS experience. It's absolutely silent because there's no fan like the iPad Pro. Yes, you are missing out on a few key features like that lovely uh, mini LED display. Um, but with the M1 MacBook Air, you get two Thunderbolt ports instead of just the one. Um, and as long as you don't need the touch screen or need the Apple Pencil, 
The M1 MacBook Air does everything that the iPad Pro can do, but better. And in a professional setting, you're going to have much more accessibility with professional applications that you potentially might need to grow into or might need to use in a professional setting if you need to collaborate because you aren't going to be able to do that with LumaFusion. I don't know how many professionals uh, in a commercial setting actually use LumaFusion, whereas with Final Cut Pro or even Premiere Pro on the M1 MacBook Air, you're going to be able to transition to those jobs much better. So if you are a student doing film or art or anything like that, and like I said, you don't need the touch display, Go for the M1 MacBook Air. You're going to save a ton of money with storage. You can even upgrade the RAM if you needed to, and it will still be cheaper than this thing. Now, I don't want to get into a war over which is the better operating system, iPadOS or macOS. I mean, we know that iPadOS is going to get updated over the years, and it's going to get better. I just think that best bang for buck, it's going to be the MacBook, whether you go for the Air or the Pro. But it's just really impressive that the MacBook Air really did hold its own. And and this is just going to be a machine, like I said, that's going to grow as you grow. But anyway, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of these tests and what your opinion is. Obviously, please be kind down there. And like I said, this isn't a scientific test, but it is really interesting to see how this really bog standard M1 MacBook Air really does compete with basically the best of the best in terms of the iPad range. Also, don't forget to check out the links down in the description if you want to pick up either one of these. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like button if you want to see more content like this. And also, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Tech Carmoon. I'm posting there a lot more. I love doing stories on Instagram, so be sure to follow me there. If you want to watch more content from me, you guys know what to do. There's two videos right over here. Click on one of them. You're going to enjoy it. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.